The topic of this short video clip is going to be something known as formal charge. The utility of formal charge, it's a calculation that's used to calculate, to indicate which of two Lewis structures that are drawn when two dissimilar Lewis structures are drawn for a given compound, which of the two structures is the one that's more likely to be the actual structure of that compound. To calculate formal charge, we'll use this equation. Formal charge is represented by the C with the subscript F. The E sub V represents the number of valence electrons that are on the atom in question. The E sub U is how many unshared electrons are on the atom in question when we look at the Lewis structure. The E sub B represents the number of bonding electrons that are connected to the atom in question when we look at the Lewis structure. Once calculating formal charge for the atoms in a Lewis structure, there's a couple criteria to help steer us towards which structure will be the more likely of the two to be the real structure. One is the formal charges we calculate for each atom are as close to zero as possible. Second is if we do get non-zero values for formal charge, if we happen to have negative values for formal charge, if the formal charge that's negative is on a strongly electronegative atom, that means it's a more likely structure. Here we have an example of where two different people have a formula and when arriving at a Lewis structure, arrive at two completely different Lewis structures for the same formula. This is where we would use formal charge to try to determine which of these Lewis structures is more likely to be the actual structure. Let's calculate our formal charge for our carbon and oxygen atoms in the structure on the left. Won't need to do hydrogen. Hydrogen's formal charge will always be the same, given it has only one bond in all Lewis structures. Our first carbon atom in here, carbon has four valence electrons. In our structure, we have zero unshared electrons on it, and the four bonds attached to carbon give us a total of eight bonding electrons. Calculating the formal charge, we get a value of zero for carbon in the structure. We'll now repeat the calculation for our oxygen atom in this Lewis structure. In our structure, the oxygen atom here, oxygen has six valence electrons. We can count it as four unshared electrons. The two single bonds attached to the oxygen count as four bonding electrons. Calculating this, we also get a value of zero for our formal charge for oxygen in this particular Lewis structure. Let's repeat the calculation now for the carbon and oxygen in the alternative Lewis structure. In this Lewis structure, carbon still has four valence electrons. It has two unshared electrons and six bonding electrons coming from the three single bonds attached to it. Calculating would get a value of negative one for our formal charge on the carbon atom in this Lewis structure. Repeating the calculation now for the oxygen atom in this Lewis structure, oxygen still has six valence electrons. It has two unshared electrons and six bonding electrons from the three single bonds attached to the oxygen. Calculating the formal charge, we have a value of one for our oxygen atom in this Lewis structure. Let's revisit our guidelines. If our formal charges are as close to zero as possible on the atoms, that indicates the structure is more likely to be the real thing. And if we have any negatives, those need to be on our more electronegative atoms. And our structure on the left, both the carbon and oxygen atoms have formal charges calculated to be zero. This is a good sign. That's as close to zero as we can get. Meanwhile, the structure on the right our carbon came up with a negative one value and the oxygen a positive one for formal charge. Since these are a little further away from zero for both of these, what this tells us is the Lewis structure on the right is less likely of the two. Our Lewis structure on the left is of these two Lewis structures, the one more likely to be the real structure. And this is the purpose and function of formal charge calculations. Let's do another example with these two molecules where again we have two dissimilar Lewis structures drawn for the same formula to see which of these is the more likely to be the real structure based on formal charge calculations. Calculating for our chlorine atom, we get a formal charge of zero. 
repeating for our nitrogen atom in this structure, we get a calculation of zero for our formal charge. Calculating for our oxygen atom in this structure, we also get a formal charge value of zero. Calculating for chlorine in the structure on the right, we get a value of chlorine of zero for our formal charge. Calculating for nitrogen in the alternative structure, we get a formal charge of negative one. Calculating the formal charge for our oxygen in this structure, we get a value of positive one for our formal charge. Evaluating the formal charge between the two compounds, we can see the compound on the left, this Lewis structure, the formal charge for all three atoms came out to be zero. That indicates that this structure is probably the more likely real structure. The one on the right, we have two values that came away from zero. That would indicate when we compare these, one with more close to zero is more likely. This structure on the right is probably not the actual Lewis structure for this compound.